Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit conduct our meditation today so that all of us may make the right decision, make the right choice for our lives. Because, as we mentioned yesterday, what the Apostle Paul said, he said that everything that a man sows, that he shall also reap. Everything we choose today, we reap the fruits tomorrow. If you make a bad choice today, tomorrow you're going to reap bad fruits. If you make a good choice today, tomorrow you're going to choose or, or reap good fruits. And what does it depend on? It depends on our mind, on the choice, the intellect of each person, our reasoning. So I reap today what I sowed yesterday, the fruit of the seed I sowed yesterday. And I will reap tomorrow the fruit of what I'm sowing today. Anyway, this is a fact, it's a reality. So I was thinking, I was thinking about that because many people unfortunately make mistakes. We all make mistakes, we all fail, no doubt about that. But we fail because of our bad choices, our wicked, wrong choices, choices which are contrary to God's choices. But why do we choose wrong? Because our heart speaks louder than our mind. And then the person who doesn't have the direction of the Holy Spirit ends up accepting, ends up going down the path directed by the heart. And then the disappointments come. Pay attention. Jesus said like this, I am the vine, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, which means that whoever is connected to the vine who is Jesus, then by default they will bear fruit by default, naturally, and if by any chance the fruit is not multiplying, then Jesus said that he will prune them so they can produce fruit. But the core of this message is what he concludes here, for without me you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Of course, you can imagine a vine, a vine and the branch being connected to the vine. What will happen? It will naturally, naturally bear grapes. Why? Because it's something natural of the vine. It's, it's in nature. And Jesus is similar to this vine. Whoever is connected to them, when a person is depending on him, depending on him, then by default they bear fruit. They bear fruit. Pay attention. Fruit, which means the following. The vine bears grapes. The olive tree bears olives, right? The olive. The orange tree bears orange. Every tree bears its own fruit because its branches are connected to the main branch. Actually, they stem. So, naturally, the orange tree will bear oranges, the vine will bear grapes, the olive tree will bear olives. That's how it goes. Naturally, each tree, 
every fruitful tree will bear fruit. Well, dear friends, this is because it is connected, it's tied to, to the stem, the main stem. So this is how things work, this is how our life with God works. Whoever is connected to the Lord Jesus, whoever places or whoever allows their life to be conducted, their will to be led by the Lord Jesus, these ones will bear much fruit. But those who don't do it, then they won't bear fruit. And what does he say about that? He says the following, If the branch does not bear fruit, then the vine dresser, who is the father, Jesus said, My father is the vine dresser. The vine dresser comes and takes it away so that it will produce fruit. And, and the one that bears fruit, he prunes. He removes the dry leaves and branches so that it may bear more fruit still. So, no one can run away from that, dear friends. People can believe it or not. People can accept it or not. It doesn't matter what people think or what they don't think. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what God says. And what He says comes to pass. It comes to pass. So, when a person is in Jesus, And in his words, he said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. I have a very interesting experience, a very nice experience with this text here of John 15, verse 7, because at a certain point in my life, when I was still single, when I was a teenager, I took this text, I point my finger on it, and I said, Lord, you are seeing me, you are hearing me, you know my entire life, and look, you said, you say, you say, God says, He says, what He says, it doesn't matter if it was a thousand years ago. It is as though He, is, he was speaking this today. So, you say here, if you abide in me, and I am in you, I said to Him, I am in you. You know that I am in you. I had given my life to Him. 100%. My heart was on the altar. So, I was sure and I am sure of that. So, you said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, yes, Lord, this as well. I, I meet this criteria here. Your words have been in me. And then you conclude you will ask what you desire, including what it's not of my will. It's including here. You can ask everything, including everything that is not God's will. And He will give it to you in order for you to know, for you to know that His word is fulfilled. However, if within all these requests we ask God, if they are not according to His will, we will still have them. We will have everything. However, that part which is not according to God's will, then we will suffer the consequences. And that's what happened to me. I never forget that. A very good experience I had. Because, you know, 
one thing is for you to read the Holy Scriptures. Another story is to see it happening in your own life. You experience what is written here. I experience this. I can speak to you about this. If you remain me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you ask what you desire, what you desire. And I asked, I asked one thing. I didn't care if it was his will, but it was my will, and I asked for it. And he gave it to me, he answered me. However, before the fact was consumed, then I saw that I had made a mistake, that I had made a wrong choice. So I said, Lord, forgive me. I chose without your direction. I asked as a child asks. They asks and it doesn't care about the consequences. A child wants because they want. So forgive me and take it away from me now. Because you said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So now I ask that you may undo everything I asked. This is too funny. Everything that you gave me, take it away. And praise God, he took it away. Praise God. It was right on time. But you know, in, in that moment, that crucial moment in a person's life, in that moment, praise God, he, he took it away quickly in that situation, that problem, was then resolved. Therefore, dear friends, we have to be careful when we are in Jesus and the words of Jesus is in us, then we, we can ask whatever we want. But pay attention. If we ask anything according to His will, it will work. Everything will flow. You will still have problems, but things will come together in the end. But if you ask for anything that is not according to His will, you're going to be in doubt. I was in doubt. I was scared to go forward with that decision. I, you know, I had no, you know, confidence. And you can understand. I said, Lord, now forgive me. Take it away from me. And he did. Amen. Praise God. That's what I wanted to tell you. What is written is written and will be fulfilled. Whether it rains or the sun is shining, it doesn't matter. Whether people believe it or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is the following. It's written and it will happen. This is the faith that has to guide our lives in regards to God. Because Jesus said clearly, he said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He removes it. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So all these words here don't depend, and they can't depend on a feeling or a desire to obey God or not. It depends on a decision in our mind. You decide, you go forward, and then yes, you obey and you reap the fruit of your obedience, okay? May God bless you all, and don't forget, in the New Year's Eve night vigil, this Sunday, the last minute, the last minute, we are going to have the bread in hand that represents the body of Jesus, we will eat of it. And in the first minute of the New Year, we are going to have the cup in hand, drinking from the grape juice that represents the blood of Jesus. 
meaning we are going to end the year in the presence of God and start the new year in His presence. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Yes, that's it. God is going to be with us every single day of the new year. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.